the major accomplishments may not be technical. They're more about the being around for almost 25 years and the community around it and just doing things a different way. It's not like Linux was new from a technical angle. It was that Linux was new because it was done differently than all the traditional Unixes. The biggest impact, I think, from, for Linux has been how Linux really brought open source into a much more uh, public view. I mean, it was not that Linux was the first open source project, but it became big and it became very successful. and. Uh, it really brought, I mean, made it clear how well open source works, not just from a technical standpoint, but also from a business, commercial, and just community standpoint. So I am very happy with how Linux worked in general, and with the fact that I feel like I made a difference, right? Everybody wants to have the feeling that they do something meaningful, I think, right? And, and the fact that Linux is not only technically very successful but also has found so many uses and and really changed to some degree how the industry does things uh, is very satisfying for me personally. The whole what would I do differently question comes up every once in a while and the thing is I'm sure I would do a lot of things differently just because of the whole second system syndrome where when you knew what you did the first time you go and screw it up the second time um, I'm very happy with everything I did. I mean, I actually think, I mean, we did, we've had a lot of technical details that we got wrong, but technical details are easy to fix when you notice that they go wrong. Um, everything non-technical, I think the Linux project really has been very successful. I was, I mean, lucky, but also some of it, I actually think was forethought, trying to stay neutral not going to work for a Linux company, for example, for the longest time. And even now that I work for Linux Foundation, I work uh, for a very neutral industry body kind of place, which means that uh, I'm not seen as competition for anybody. And, and that was something I was very conscious about, and, and I think it's worked really well. The thing I ended up doing was just tinkering. And I actually think there are lots and lots of options to tinker, M many more and much more available than when I started computing. Uh, I find it exciting how FPGAs these days are cheap and plentiful and you can really start doing hardware design in your like teens in your own bedroom or, or mother's basement as the saying goes, uh, which was not realistic at all when, when I started. And that would have made me really enthusiastic. I, and you see projects like Raspberry Pi, and then you have all these languages that make it much easier to generate small, useful programs. So I think there's a ton of opportunity for people. But in the end, you, the important part is finding something you're really interested in yourself so that you actually tinker and continue doing it because the only way to get really good, and that's the way people do get really good is you spend 8, 10, 12 hours a day doing something just because you find it interesting. And, uh, and I can't tell people what they should find interesting, uh, but I can say that there's a lot of opportunities out there. That's actually part of the history of Linux is I'm from Finland. And uh, that's important because in Finland, university is free. I mean, really free. You have to pay for books and there's a nominal fee for extended healthcare, but basically you can coast around and do whatever you want to. I was doing a course in uh, compilers and Unix, and uh, I just found it to be fascinating. Unix in particular was a big revelation for me. Uh, I the university machines used to be VAX VMS machines, and I hated using them. And uh, that course to me said, hey, this is what I want to have at home. And suddenly, 
back then in 1990 or 18, I guess I was introduced in 89 maybe. Um, that was really not an option. Uh, commercial Unix was like $5,000 for a license because they sold to banks and corporations and things like that. So even a single user license, five grand to a company is nothing, right? But five grand to somebody who's in university and doesn't have any money at all, that's a big chunk of money. And uh, instead I got a non-commercial Unix clone that was very limited, but it was kind of fun and interesting and it wasn't quite good enough for me. And since already I was 21 at the time, I knew I was the best programmer in the world, like all 21 year olds do, right? And I had been programming for almost half my life by then. I basically said, how hard can this be? And the rest is history, literally. I want to work on interesting things, right? And I want to do things that, I want to solve real problems. And I want them to be my real problems, not trying to find somebody else's problem to solve for them. And uh, that's always been true with the software projects I work on. The fact that then, especially thanks to open source, other people come in and bring in their own problems. And then when you've solved your own problems, you can go on and, and look at what the big picture problems are. That makes it interesting and means that you can continue doing one project for over 20 years. The philosophy is not to look for big questions to be solved. The, I want to find problems in my everyday life that I just want to solve myself. So I don't have a plan. I don't have a five-year plan. And some of it is conscious uh, because I actually think that the whole five-year plans, we saw how well that worked for um, China and Russia. It doesn't work in technology either. You can't plan ahead because nobody has a great view of what's coming up. Um, I have ideas of what's going on, but at the same time one of my, one of the things that made me happiest was how well Git, our, the source control management system we use for the kernel, how well that worked. And that came out of the blue, really. I mean, it was it was a situation where the last thing I ever wanted to do was source control management. I thought that people who were interested in that were just all out to lunch and, and I wanted nothing whatsoever to do with it. And then what happened was that I was forced to figure out a solution to the problem we had in the kernel and uh, started my own source control management system. And now Git is one of the most successful SCMs out there in open source. Um, and the point of that story is that things happen, right? And you can't really plan for them. Uh, the, what I try to do is just um, react to things and figure out what the correct reaction is. And whether that will mean that I'll start a new project in another five years, I don't know.